welcome to episode 32 of Down the Hobbit Hole. Today is Tuesday, <laughs> uh, February the 6th, 2018, and this is my podcast about knitting and spinning and all things making. Uh, so yeah, if you'd like to find me online, I'll have a little thing coming up over here, uh, or you can uh, just look down below in the description and you'll find links to everything down there. So the first thing to talk about is the Year of the Bat spin-along has begun. And this is um, a year-long spin-along that we're doing. Uh, it started on the 1st of February, and it's going through the end of the year uh, in my Ravelry group that's down the Hobbit hole. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, for me, it's an opportunity to uh, spin different yarns than I normally spin since I tend to be pretty consistent. Uh, I spin the kind of the same thickness and the same style I guess uh, every time I sit down to spin so I'm trying to change that up a little bit, uh, embrace a little more texture in my hand spun and I'm trying to use this also as an opportunity to explore new textures in the bats that I make. So you can use this, um, if you're already spinning and you just want to hang out and talk with other people who are spinning, then that's fine. Uh, you can, you don't have to have any kind of a set goal. It's just, yeah. Uh, all you have to do to enter to win is head over to the Ravelry group and join. And then uh, there are, there's a finished objects thread. So if you're spinning any kind of fiber, you go ahead, uh, post a picture of your finished yarn in the group. Whips are welcome. And, uh, in that thread at the end of the month I'll close it and I'll draw a winner. And the winner for that finished objects thread will receive this bat. Oop. It's a little, there we go. Uh, both bats that are, uh, there are two finished objects threads and uh, both of the bats are inspired by Philip K. Dick in one way or another, uh, and you probably know him as the author, or he wrote the book that Blade Runner was based off of. Uh, and I haven't seen the new Blade Runner, and I haven't seen the new Amazon series that they have, uh, which I need to, but uh, I've been feeling very inspired by his book, uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? So this one's called Android Affections. And it is, and these are bats that um, I've carded, and this one's mixed wools with bamboo, fire star, and recycled yarn snippets, and that's what, ooh, let me see if I can, ooh, right here, those metallic bits are all bits of yarn. And it's in pinks and purples with black thrown in there. Uh, it's going to be a very pretty yarn once it's all spun up. Um, there's 2.9 ounces. We will also have a bonus finished optics thread uh, for the spin along for anyone who just happens to be using Misty Mountain Makers Fibers. Uh, and that's my hand dyed yarn and fiber company. And uh, you can find a link to it down below if you want to check it out. But same Thing applies. Uh, the only difference for the bonus finished objects thread, as it's listed in the Ravelry group, um, is that in order to enter, it has to be Misty Mountain Makers fiber. So, here is the bat. Um, <laughs> it is getting blown out just a bit. It's more of like a fuchsia like an electric teal <laughs> highlighter yellow and black so and there's a purple Angelina in there so uh, this is also 2.9 ounces and let me get it back <laughs> into the bag that I'm keeping it in comes in a little drawstring bag so that you can keep using the bag after or while you're spinning it if you are drop spinning. 
So, yeah, um, if you are if you are using Misty Mountain Makers fibers, uh, that additional thread is a bonus. So you can post in both threads, so you have a chance to win in both finished objects threads. And if you're not spinning with my fiber, no problem. You can just post in the regular finished objects thread and still be entered to win. So everybody, everybody gets to be happy. <laughs> If you have any questions, uh, let me know. There's a chatter thread. Uh, go ahead, post it there, or message me directly if you want to. Um, but it's supposed to be fun. There are no weight requirements. Um, and it's just, the only thing I ask is that it be a finished yarn. So don't post a single that you plan on plying later. But if you don't plan on plying it, if it's finished, you can post a picture of a single. That's fine. Uh, the thread's open. Uh, you may see me posting in there. I'm not eligible to win the prizes, but it's more fun for me if I get to post and participate in there. And yeah, I get myself little presents if I uh, participate and draw my number when I'm doing random number generator at the end of the month. Probably patterns. Uh, I've really got my eye on Hohi Locatelli's new patterns, the simple ones. I think it's the simple one and then the bulky one. I could be wrong about that, but yes, I have my eye on those right now. But on to knitting, or I guess I should tell you what I've been spinning. So I've been spinning, and you guys will have seen this earlier if you've been watching, or if you follow me on Instagram. Uh, I got a little overexcited and started spinning early even though I was supposed to clear off my bobbins. And I've been working with this. This is a pink Cordale wool. I got a fleece when Tim and I were on our honeymoon. While Tim and I were on our honeymoon, uh, there we go. <laughs> I found, um, I bought a fleece. Uh, it was a Cordale fleece that I brought home, I washed, and I dyed it up in batches and then carded the different colors together. And so this batch ended up being uh, pinks and purples and I added um, lots of bamboo and fire star. So I'm very happy with the way it's spinning up. I've already got 4.9 ounces spun. Um, I'm not sure how much is on here, but I'm thinking of doing a three ply, but I'm wondering. I don't think I'd have the yardage. I really want to have enough spun that I can knit the bulky one by Hohi Locatelli, but I think I need 900 yards, and I very much doubt that I will have that much. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how I end up spinning it. I might do a two ply just so I can get the extra yardage. Uh, so I can make something nice rather than having enough to make like seven, or not seven hats, but enough to make like a cowl and a hat and gloves, but I won't wear all three of those at once. So it'd be a little too matchy. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but it's coming together well. I still have one full bat and like a half. So I should have another four or five ounces to spin outside of what's already on the bobbin. So I'm thinking I'll end up with maybe a pound altogether, somewhere between maybe closer to like 14 ounces uh, spun, but we'll see what I'm able to make with what with the weight that I've spun up. Uh, so far, I don't think my consistency has been I don't have any real consistency across the yarns, but I'm planning to uh, do a true, or to do a, an actual two ply and not just spin from each end of the cake, like caking it up and then spinning from each end, because I want to spread out this as much as possible. My next spinning adventure, uh, I will be, I'm working on a Shetland fleece. It's um, a beautiful chocolatey brown that uh, someone gave to me for free at a Guild D-Stash Day. 
and I've been working on that for uh, Grace from Babel's Traveling Yarn podcast. Uh, she's doing an epic along, and that is my goal, is to work my way through that fleece and hopefully spin enough to make a sweater either for Tim or for myself. Once I have the yarn finished, I'll show it to Tim, see if he wants it, and if he doesn't, it'll be mine. But, yeah, that's, that's a whole other project that I have not started spinning yet. Um, so far, I've just been carding. So I'll show that to you guys when I actually start spinning. But hopefully next time I record, I'll be finished with this and on to that one. As for knitting, uh, I have two finished objects this week, and the first one is this massive hat. <laughs> this is the Harf and Snow hat by Maria of Ninja Chickens podcast, and if you haven't watched her podcast, you really need to, and Grace's. Check them both out. The links will be down below, but I love this hat. It's not my normal style. It's very big and very baggy um, and kind of engulfs my head, but it's the warmest hat that I have and since it's still very cold here and it's getting to the point uh, where I can't zip my... I can, I can still zip my jacket over my belly. Uh, I am... 24 weeks pregnant, or 25, I think, at the moment, and the pickle is taking up quite a bit of space. Uh, keeping my head warm has been a huge help in keeping the rest of me warm. So this hat has been wonderful. Um, it's made out of, I think it's Plymouth Baby Alpaca, the bulky weight. So it's very nice. It's a little prickly on my forehead, but considering how warm my head is, I don't mind. Uh, the only thing I still want to do is buy uh, buy or make um, a fur pom-pom to put on the back of it to kind of hold it down and keep it from like poofing out a little bit in the back. So yeah, great hat. Uh, pattern is totally worth it and I will be making more of these because uh, she has it in multiple sizes. So you don't have to make your hat as long as this one is. I think this one's like 14 inches from brim to tip. Uh, but there's like a beanie version, um, a mildly slouchy version, and then the slouchiest of versions, which is the one that I did. Uh, I also used a yarn that was thicker than necessary. Uh, so my hat is a bit bigger than it should have been in the pattern, but I don't care. It's perfect and I love it. So. Uh, the other thing that I've been making is this itty bitty little baby hat. Oh my gosh. And this is for the pickle. And it is Gather by Tin Can Knits. And my spacing's a little off here. I changed the size just a little bit, which I did not realize would throw off my decreases completely. So I went with it. Uh, <laughs> It turned out really well. I'm trying to make sure that he has plenty of hats to keep his little head warm when he gets here. And yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. It's super soft. It's 100% um, super fine merino wool, I believe. I think it's super wash. Um, I went through my stash and pulled all of my luxury skeins. Uh, the skeins that I only have one ball of um, that I've been cuddling for years and have never used and I'm using them for baby hats. So for his other hat that I'm working on, which is also by Tin Can Knits, this is Antler. Uh, the Antler Torque, I think. Or I think, I'm not actually sure how you say that. I think it's Torque. But then again, I might be thinking of Tim talking about engines. So <laughs> uh, here it is. And this is in Road to China Light by the Fiber Company. And I love it. It's um, 
Superwash. I, I, no, 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 not Superwash. It's Merino Camel Silk and Bamboo, I think. Uh, something crazy uh, that I wouldn't normally go, ooh, that'd be perfect for a baby hat. But uh, since it's for me, and I know how to wash it, and it's on top of his head, so hopefully it won't get too messed up. Um, I'm not too worried about it. And I want the hats to be as soft as possible, so there's no prickle factor, and he doesn't learn to hate hats, because I'm keeping hats on his head that are making his skin itchy. So, yes. Hopefully this will be nice and cozy. I'm still working on it. I'm only two repeats in. Uh, but I think I'm already getting close. Yeah, I'm just over two inches, and I need to get to three and a half before I can start the decreases. So I think this hat is a... It calls for a worsted weight. And size six needles for the ribbing and size eight needles for the hat. But I tried that. Um, I have some... I have a ball of 100% cashmere that I started making uh, his hat in, and it's in about the same color. But the hat could almost fit me <laughs> when I was making the baby size. So I dropped down to size 4 and size 6, which is what I used for the gather hat. And that seems to be working really well. I'm also using a fingering weight. So it seems to be working okay. We'll keep going. I don't actually have any babies to try this on. So hopefully when he gets here, it'll just fit because I think in the first few weeks, I'm going to be too tired to make him a new hat, no matter how quick it would be to whip it up. Um, also on the note of the pickle, I have been working on his granny stripe. So here it is so far. And that little leather tassel marker is where I was last time I recorded. There. <laughs> so I'm really loving the way this is coming along. Um, I'm not worried about it being washable. I'm just using whatever minis I have laying around. And it's been a really enjoyable, really enjoyable crochet. I almost said knit, but I caught myself. <laughs> Tim keeps making fun of me because I keep saying knit. Uh, and he doesn't need correcting often for saying knit or crochet, but he knows that it bothers me when I see like, uh, why knitting's great for you online. And then the link, uh, the image above the link that you click on is someone crocheting. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Couldn't do your research. So he, he likes to give me a hard time about that, but the blanket's coming along really well. So I want to get this done soon so that I can just have it set aside and know that it's finished. I'm feeling a little bit of pressure. I've still got three months. Yeah, I've still got three months. Four months. I don't know how long I have. <laughs> I have until the end of May. And uh, it, it'll be done in time. But I know I tend to put things off. And I just want to have a nice chest full of baby knits so I can bundle him up when he gets here and keep him cozy. So that's the plan. Um, and I've got a bunch of minis set aside specifically for this. So I shouldn't run out of yarn anytime soon. So I had to cut in or cut out. Um, I was having some storage issues with my phone that have now been fixed. Um, but I think the last thing I showed you was the baby blanket that I've been working on. So, uh, that's coming along swimmingly for the pickle. And Tiber is currently rubbing his face all over the tripod. So, <laughs> if he's moving it, sorry. <laughs> Hi, baby. So, the other item I've been working on is another hat. Um, and this yarn I've actually showed you guys before. This is my hand spun. And I'm making myself a hat. I was trying to make, come on, 
I was trying to make a hat similar to the hearth and snow hat because I loved it so much, but I didn't do any kind of a gauge swatch ahead of time. So <laughs> it's more of a beanie uh, the way that it is now, but I love the way the yarn is working up. Come on, make up your mind, babe. Tiber has not been feeling well. Uh, he's got a very flat downward tail uh, lately, so he's going to the vet tomorrow. But he's just been super sad and cuddly. <laughs> So now he's just using his face to make love to everything in the room. Um, but this yarn, I showed it to you as a cake, and I wish, I wish the colors would come through a little clearer, but it's got all these different colors as it works through. I think that's a little more accurate. And I didn't plan it, but I wound up with a navy brim, and then just right after the ribbing, it started changing colors. So that worked out really, really well. And uh, I'm really happy with the way that it looks. I added the cable just to add a little bit of interest because I didn't want it to be just stockinette. Um, and it's a horseshoe cable. I think it's a, or a stag pattern. I'm not sure, I can't remember what it's called. It's an 18 stitch repeat with two pearls on either side. He's now trying to steal Tesla's chair. Tesla has a high-backed yellow chair that he watches the chickens from, and in fact, let me see. This is where I'm overwintering my plants as well. Come on, Tiber. That's Tiber's normal spot. And here's Tesla. <laughs> I know Tesla. There's a dog on the TV. Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> He's seeing himself and Tiber on the screen. Uh, but in the corner, this big one here is a lemon tree that I've grown from seed. And this little one's a lime. These are some crazy three-leafed clover-type plants that my grandma gave me that are going wild. They love it over here. And then down here is a little goji plant uh, that did not do very well outside. Take that. It didn't do very well last spring. It uh, couldn't compete with the grass that was out there, and it was just like three sad little leaves when I brought it inside. It's doing much better. Somebody, I think it was Tesla, uh, yeah, smacked it and snapped the little stalk that it had. So now it's got like a, a big smoothie straw around it to keep it upright, and uh, it's doing much better now. So. Hopefully he's not dead. He is... <gasps> Tesla. It's a dog. It's a dog, Tesla. Who is that? Who is it? My goodness. He gets very upset when there are dogs on the screen. Once Upon a Corgi is his favorite podcast because of all of the... All of the pups and the cats on it. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, sorry. That got us very off topic. Um, so yes, I'm very happy with this. Um, I think I cast on 60 stitches with a size 6 and then went up to a size 8. I'm, um, I may re-knit it depending on how it feels once it's on because it may be too snug, but I think once I block it it'll be okay. I figure it's a hat and I can re knit it pretty quickly if it's completely unwearable. So, working on that still. Um, I, have, I haven't been working on it that long. It was actually a really quick knit. 
Uh, so was this one. I mean, based on the size, you may not think that, but it was like maybe three days of knitting. And that's with me like taking it to game night uh, to play Settlers of Catan and just knitting it in the evenings while watching Tim play Fallout or something. So really nice relaxed knit. Um, I'm really enjoying this hat too. So if I have to re-knit it, it won't be a big deal. Uh, and then I think the other two things I've been working on, one, well, they're both socks. Uh, one you guys have seen before and the other you have not. So the one you haven't seen is, oh, I always forget her name. I didn't print the front page. So I don't have, because it was just a picture and the title, but I think it's called After School and it's by somebody whose name I will put up here. Uh, she's, she writes a beautiful pattern. It's like eight pages long uh, for making these socks. And it's clearly <laughs> a work in progress, but if you look at the toe and the way that it slants, uh, there is a right foot and a left foot for this pattern, which I think is really cool. It's DK weight. So this yarn that I'm using is by Twist Fiber Studios. And it was, um, I got it at SAF. It was an impulse buy, but it was on sale and I couldn't pass it up. And I think it's called Bluegrass Sunrise. And, uh, it's just a beautiful DK weight, and we didn't know back in October if we were having a boy or a girl. So I bought it, and I figured if we have a girl, perfect. If we have a boy, I can always have it because I love it. Um, not my normal colors, but still very happy with it. Um, especially the sections of yellow in here. They may be coming across as a bit orange, but there's orange and yellow and pink. Um, and then the woman who designed that pattern <laughs> offered three different DK weight sock patterns for free. They're normally $5 a piece. Uh, so I snapped them up and I'm loving this pattern so far. I have to pay attention because you are increasing the toe and not to give too much away, but it's, um, uneven increases. So there's, in the beginning you're going one way and then the next, in another part you're going another way. So you can see it from the picture, but it's very cool. I really like the way it's turning out. And I, I'm not sure if I'm going to like having a left foot and a right foot, but since most of my socks are not foot specific, I think it should be okay because I have a tendency to just grab two pairs of socks and as long as they have a similar texture uh, or level of cushionedness, uh, I will wear them regardless of matching. So I don't want to have to keep these two together all the time, but since most of my other socks are not side specific, it shouldn't be an issue. So, But it's coming along well. I had to restart it a few times because I wasn't keeping track of my rows very well. Um, but now I am. I'm marking them on the pattern. And I was really lucky because I bought these cubics. Or... They're Knitter's Pride. I think they're called cubics. Um, they're the square needles. And I bought them on a whim. They were on clearance at Hook and Needle. So... I don't know what that noise was. They were on clearance at Hook and Needle. And uh, I bought them on a whim because I thought I might end up trying out the Cozy Memories blanket or uh, something along those lines. But these are the only needles I had that were in the right size for these socks. And they're really nice to work with. They're sharp, but not too sharp. And they just, they work really well. Um, I'm actually thinking I might want to get more of these in the future. So, we'll see. 
But yeah, so those are going well. And since it's DK weight, I should be able to finish these quickly. I am doing them one at a time, um, which I think is a good thing since the right and the left sock are so very different. So, And then I'll have a nice cozy pair of socks to wear when I'm finished. Uh, the only other item that I've really been working on, I have been working on my brioche cowl, but I haven't really made enough progress to even bother showing it to you. So I'll show you when there's something to show. But here we go. My Hermione's Everyday Socks. So I may have started knitting these when I first started the podcast. So it's been almost a year. <laughs> but I messed up one row and I was just so, so angry with it. Not angry with it. But every time I picked it up, I was kind of disappointed. So I put it away for a while and now I've got it back out. And I'm really glad that I got it out. I have everything fixed so I can just start knitting. And hopefully, since I've already got the heel and the cuff mm -hmm. done, I can make these kind of my travel socks and hopefully have these finished soon too. They're, the needles I'm using are really nice. I think they are just the Knitter's Pride Steels. They're not the super sharp ones um, because the Knitter's Pride Sharps tend to snap into my fingers. Uh, Knitter's Pride is pretty much my go-to brand of needles, but I think it's just partially because I haven't tried much else. Uh, I've tried Knit Picks and I am not a fan of their joins. Uh, but pretty much everything I've gotten from Knitter's Pride has been great. So I see no real reason to branch out from there. I do wanna try some more um, Chiagus and other brands just to see if I'm missing out on something. But for now I'm pretty content, so. And I think the, oh, 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 oh. Okay, so, very exciting news. This behemoth behind me uh, is my loom, and it's been warped. Yes. So it took me forever to wind a 12-yard warp. So that's, like I think, 36 feet. Uh, it took seven hours, I think, for my friend and I to warp the loom. Uh, she has much more experience than I do, so I let her, uh, let her, so she came over and she helped me. I didn't let her do anything. <laughs> she definitely did me a favor, uh, but my friend Madeline came over and we spent about seven hours warping this thing. Now, I shouldn't have to warp it for a very long time, but I am so happy to finally be using it, um, and I'll probably overlay some videos here so you can see what I've been doing, but I've been working, there are four harnesses, four shafts. Um, I think it's a four shaft Leclerc initiation. It's 32 inches wide, the weaving space. And right now I believe the reed or the beater it, I'm not great on the terminology, but it uh, is about 12 ends per inch. So I'm using fingering weight for the warp, and it's just white, so that I can play, find out what I like, and try different weaving styles without the pressure of having any particular color on it or stressing out about the fact that eventually I will have to rewarp it. Right now, I think I'm going to be able to weave for months uh, without having to worry. I'm making a six-foot scarf right now, and it's out of my A Lady Never Discusses the Size of Her Stash colorway on my Elven base, which is a Merino, 75% Superwash Merino, 10% 
Tencel, and 15% nylon. Um, and it's really nice. I dyed it up for the second anniversary of uh, Hook and Needle, which is uh, my local yarn shop. And I love the way that it's weaving up. So the front looks really great. I'm doing a twill pattern. And um, it has floating selvages. And if you watch Babel's Traveling Yarn, she's got a rigid heddle loom, uh, which is a more portable loom. And she talks a bit about floating selvages and weaving and all that. But basically, uh, the strands are laid out. So then when I hit the first petal, um, they're in groupings of four, all the, all the ends of the warp. And when I put down my foot on the first petal, one strand of the four goes up. And then when I put my, take my foot off, it goes back down. And then when I lift the, the next one, uh, put my yarn through, and then it falls down. Lift the next one, yarn goes through. So the top is the two sides of the weaving don't match. So the top is going to be very heavy with the uh, actual yarn that I'm using for the weft, for the, the actual dyed yarn that I'm putting in. But if you flip it over, the warp is seen much more. So it's mostly white with speckles of the red and the black showing through. And it looks really cool. And hopefully I'll have images for everything I'm talking about right now. <laughs> so this isn't just abstract babbling. Well, you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, but I am really enjoying it. I started out weaving. She had to go home. Uh, she couldn't stay all, you know, the entirety of the day. It was already getting really late. Uh, so I started weaving um, after Madeline left, and I was weaving too tightly. I was pulling the edges in too much, so I had a really rippled look to my weaving. But um, I've loosened up considerably and added, like, maybe an inch or two uh, to the width of it because I'm not pulling it in so tightly. And that seems to have helped with the waviness. Uh, I've done about two feet, just over two feet now. Um, and I'm just tying something on the side of the warp, uh, or the side of the scarf, every foot, so that at the end I can just count how many ties I have on the edge. Next time I'm going to attach one of those cheapo uh, sewing rulers. Uh, the yellow ones that you get in a roll for like a dollar. Uh, I saw Grace doing that in Babel's Traveling Yarn, and that's brilliant. So I'm going to do something like that uh, the next time I do it. But for now, this is working. And I should be able to use it for quite some time. Uh, we did forget to use the back. There's like a beam above where the yarn uh winds onto the back and <laughs> we were having Madeline does tons of weaving she knows all about weaving um, and has taken tons of classes and stuff so it's so funny that we were struggling to get the back and the front to line up um, and once we were done and we were hanging out and she was putting on her coat and everything I looked at the loom and went oh I wonder if we could have used this back beam to put the yarn over it and then everything would have been level and she just face palmed and was like oh my gosh that is exactly what we were supposed to do I totally missed it uh, and she was beating herself up about it which considering we got 36 feet of warp on there uh, I'm perfectly happy as soon as I'm done with this scarf all I have to do is unscrew the back beam and slip it under to put everything in place so, not worry about it whatsoever. She did me a huge favor coming over. But I'm hoping I will be able to show you guys that scarf the next time I record. I'm only at two feet right now, but I haven't been weaving every day. So I think if I weave, like, 20 minutes every day, then hopefully I'll have that scarf finished soon. And I can show it to you the next time I'm on here, and I'll take some footage of 
putting that back beam <laughs> where it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, I do also have a rigid heddle. Uh, as much, I love this loom and I want to warp my next project once I'm finished with the warp that's already on it is I want to warp um, all of my all of my yarn scraps that are like worsted and under mm -hmm. probably more like DK and under uh, I want to warp the whole thing and then weave into it to make like a scrappy woven blanket and I think it'll look really nice if I plan it out right. And it'll be a 32 inches wide, so it'll be a nice blanket slash wrap. So if we go somewhere, we can lay it out and flop onto it, or we can just keep it on the couch and keep our legs warm, or, you know, I can just bundle up in it. So that's my next plan for it. I think the loom is only going to be used for bigger projects in the future. Uh, just because I'm so intimidated by it and warping it on my own. It's not so scary now, but with my rigid, with the rigid heddle that I borrowed from the guild, um, I should be able to just attach the strand, pull it out to the length that I want it to be, and cut it, and then attach just each strand. Use my hand spun because the I have varying reeds. That I can use uh, are varying dents in the heddles that I can use uh, to use bigger yarns because uh, the blue thing that you're seeing here is the space that the yarn has to be able to fit through it's very small right now so there's no way there's no way I could fit a yarn like this through there without the yarn getting basically mangled, uh, possibly snapping. So we'll see. I'm going to warp that and I'll take video of warping it uh, to show you guys what I'm making on it. Uh, probably going to do some kind of art yarn scarf and yeah, I may end up either getting or asking Tim to make me a rigid heddle. Uh, for, specifically for making fun art yarn scarves and things like that. Uh, Tim just got... Well, <laughs> Tim just got a... I was going to save this for later, but he got a laser cutter. Um, it's a 3 foot by 5 foot cutting space. The thing is massive. Uh, I keep trying to get him to bring home the crate because it had to be delivered to his work because there was some snafu with the delivery company. They had the laser, they just weren't going to deliver it for some reason. Uh, and Tim was going out of town, so the guys at work were like, no problem, we'll hold on to it. So there's a the crate for it I want, and I just want to line the whole thing with cushions and have it be my little reading box that I can climb into. And then when Finn's older, he can climb in with me. Uh, which, I mean, I could take him in as a baby too. But I don't think we have space in the house for the crate in any of the rooms so <laughs> but uh, yeah I think that is all of the knitting fiber and crochet that we have for today so if that's all you're here for uh, thank you so much for tuning in uh, the next little bit's gonna be life stuff so if you want to skip that you are more than welcome I'll see you guys next time so today is Thursday the 8th of February, I think, uh, <laughs> and I realized that the uh, light portion of the podcast got cut off because of storage issues, so um, I'll go ahead and just record that again. Uh, Tesla and I are outside. Um, the Bacalls are out. Uh, they escaped the coop again, so I'm letting them fill up on grass. We're going to move them to this area in a little bit. We moved them down to the apple trees, but they decimated a little bit of greens that were down there. So we're going to bring them back up here, which is where they were originally. Uh, the house is right there and the garage is over here. 
Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, this morning, uh, starting us off on a bit of a downer, but this morning um, I came out, both Bacalls and one of the Pettigrews were running about, um, and when I grabbed some scratch grains, walked down to the coop, they followed me all the way back. But, uh, Hey Hey, who was our last salmon flavoral, oops, not even doing what I'm supposed to be doing in my pattern. Um, something got a hold of her last night, so she is no longer with us. Uh, Tim dug the hole and we put her in last year's garden, um, which was not a fun thing to wake up to, but uh, we will be, we have our roosters ordered, so hopefully we can bring the girls closer to the house and keep them safe until they are delivered and old enough uh, to properly protect them. So we'll see. And I'm, what's so sad about it is the salmon flavorals are like, the, they're not the friendliest. Um, they're not aggressive, they're just a little flighty, but um, they are the goofiest of the birds that we had. Uh, they would bend over and have their head like almost on the ground and run, but their legs would stick out in funny directions. Uh, and they love to play with Tesla from the other side of the fence. So, uh, yeah, our friends have, their flock is entirely salmon flavorals and they're getting some roosters uh, this year. We're going to brood them for them and uh, maybe we'll work out something where we can get some chicks from them uh, in a few years to replace our, not replace, but to have some flavorals in the flock again. Um, aside from that, uh, we haven't been up to much. I have been cooking like crazy, uh, and I've been making like full crock pots and full uh, Dutch ovens worth of stuff, and thinking that I am awesome, and we're gonna be fed for like an entire week, and then Tim comes in with his six foot five man appetite and just decimates everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we are uh, looking into getting more crock pots and Dutch ovens so I can do bigger batches. I don't know what I'm going to do when uh, Finn is uh, a teenage boy because there's just, I'm going to be chained to the oven cooking uh, so that they can both have enough to eat. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Um, Things are going well. I'm 25 weeks pregnant today, I think. And uh, I've been having some migraines, which is why we haven't had as many podcasts, because looking at the computer uh, and just, I don't know, it's, it's not quite so good, but we think that it's because of Tesla. Come. Ah, ah, ah. Look, thank you for bringing the book call down. Hi, beautiful. Come on. Tesla went around the house and brought the book call to me. Good boy. Good boy, Tesla. Hey, pretty lady. The other recall is over by the coop, trying to get back in. If you hear scratching noises, it's just... Uh, 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 uh. It's just... Uh, Audrey. Having some fun in the leaves right here. But, uh, yeah. Uh, we think that the migraines are just from me not drinking enough water. And they're not so bad when I'm not looking at a screen. So, I'm going to drink more water. And I'm going to move towards a vlog type recording for the next podcast so I can record in little batches and then get them in the computer in little batches and not be at the computer for so long editing. So I think that'll work out um, and we may have episodes closer together uh, with that new system so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much all we've been up to. Um, Uh, as far as 
what we've been doing. Tim got fallout, uh, and I don't know if any of you have husbands or significant others who play video games, but if you can get a Steam link that allows you to see what they're playing on the computer on the television, you should totally do it because it's way more fun than watching a movie and you get to scream, no, no, you're gonna die, you're gonna die, you, <laughs> the whole time they're playing. <laughs> And it ends up being a lot more fun. Uh, we have been watching Psych. I've gotten through, I'm into season eight, um, and I'm starting over with Tim because he has only seen, he hasn't seen any of it, but he's seen a few episodes like coming into the room while I'm watching, and he really likes them so far. So we'll be doing more of that. Uh, season one, I skipped because it's just not my favorite. Uh, Sean is much more of a patoot than just a goofy guy uh, trying to get away with being a psychic, but the show's a lot of fun, so if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. But, yeah, thought I'd show you guys. Made some progress on my uh, after-school socks. Uh, still don't have the name of the author for you, or the designer. But um, I'll pop that up. And this is with Twist Fiber Studios in the Bluegrass Sunrise. So, very happy. They're coming along so quickly. Uh, I didn't expect them to knit up this fast, but they're DK weight, so of course they would. So I think I'm gonna spend some time out here watching over the Bacalls as they munch up all the grass. And then once I get a little too cold, I'll, head, I'll pop them back in the coop and head inside. But I hope you guys have a great, uh, great week. Uh, if you are spinning, don't forget to head over to the uh, Ravelry group so you can join in, in the Year of the Bat Spin Along. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.